राइट Grace and peace to you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to this our platform Wesley Guild SA as we come this Monday morning as we continue with our programs of making sure that young people in this Wesley Guild SA not only young people but people in general get to understand social and economic and political issues of our time and the history today. We start the week where we look at biographies of of prominent methodist and we felt that we have to look into the life of um, the first president of the pan africanist uh, congress robert mangali sobokwe and we will be listening to that input from professor gordon zede prof corner yes mikon thank you very much professor mikon welcome to this program and we will ask umfundi sungombo to please open for us with a prayer and then introduce you to take over the platform umfundi sungombo please pray for us okay. let us pray loving and generous god tikwa izolo tikwa namhlanje tikwa ngona phakade tikwa wethu tikwa wa africa tikwa abantu abamnyama ngebala ongaphethe bala lamtu wathe wafela nabazi mfama emva kwemini somandla sondela kuwe sibulela ngosicino nguwe nokuthandwa nguwe sibulela ngosincaba zakho ezimingwa naphakade nangalo tusuku ngosi sizavuma sidungutiko akayikho nokulinganiswa nawe akayikho nokufaniswa nawe asidibana ngosi ngoba usuku bana mhlanje we want more lord invite your presence in this conversation as we lord look and reflect in the life of the late robert sobukwe nangu ngosi tatu zide simbeka ngosi ligcinweni lakho eza usikhokhela hlala naye somandla sithandazela ngosi bonke abantu bethu abaphula phuleyo kwindawo ngendawo kumakhaya ngamakhaya kwinxele nobusika nezifo nako konke okhoyo ngiba nguthixo wethu somandla singali lahla ithemba ngoba noba uthe wena ezweni lakho noba singahamba emfuleni wethunzi lokufa masingoyiki bubi ngoba unathu wena ngamaxesha onke sisikelele sisayiqala le nqubo umkhonzi wakho umfundi usitemeleza uphatha uhlelo umsikelelo umngcwalise naye zonke ezi zinto sicela sisazi bya usenzela nesingazicelanga ngegameli ihlele inkosi yethu yeyesu Kristu amen 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 thank you very much umfundi ngombo for for that prayer uh, oh professor zide is the vice chancellor of the valleys of technology is a very staunch methodist member and we welcome you prof and i know you had a very important input at the beginning of the seminar at the mukitimi methodist seminary and we welcome you to this platform this is a platform of young people of wesley guild sa but it has reached wider more than young people and we welcome you to this space for you to share with us the life of robert mangaliso sobuko we will give you an opportunity to have an input and then later in the program we will have an engagement session with the various questions and comments that comes from our facebook page without wasting much time i'll now hand over to you prof to lead us with your input over to you sir thank you okay okay thank you very much um, my dad's correct correction for this i am no longer the vice chancellor of the val university of technology i'm retired um when they know us as singa to me the message wrong abantu baza kuti no he is still dressing himself with borrowed gowns you know yeah my 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 looks so long i used to be but i'm retired now so i hope aba pula pula baza um we got to london um very briefly uta to sobukwe i met him in 1958 Um, Sikona. Hello. Uh, hey, we, Sikona, Sikona, we can hear you clearly. Okay. okay. No, that's I Sikona, okay. Prof, we can hear you clearly. Sikona. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. I met him in 1958 um, at Alwa North. I was uh, a young boy then of about um, seven years or so. Now he visited my late uncle ochate notadobao ujo nyati pokela um they were together at university and they were together in the 
um, ANC Youth League. Um, when he came to Alwa North in 1958, um, I was very young. I was not um, exposed to politics at the time. But um, as a black child, whether you like it or not, at a very young age, you, you tend to have an understanding of the inequalities and disparities taking place in our country. Now, what struck me the most about this old man, um, evidently, he trademark Gaprov uh, Nawa. You know, I, I looked at this old man um, with a pipe. And so the first question he asked me was, we have a Tandabilu. Now, if you know Ialwa North, E town, Yakule, Sispor of Nelogish, Mazo Zenin Patil, Lechach, Yanin, Ikule, Sispor of St. Rain. And now, in my own naivety, I said, Well, I don't really like them because Bonabasha Little Pin, Tina Shaleloxi, is in Zabo Zinke, and Eze to Zikoko. I mean, he laughed at it. Um, and uh, uh, he said, looking at my uncle, that um, one day this young man is going to be a leader. Okay, I mean, it was just one of those small talks. Um, but then he asked, he asked my name and I told him that um, which Naro, by the way, you know, Abandabanins with the new um, South Africa. Amagama Abu was Lunga Bawatandi Gangabo. But nonetheless, I told him that my name, Kosa name, is Ndodomzi. And uh, affectionately said, Oh, Ungundo. And, and that was it, you know. Um, but now, when the ambulance, the following day, I visited my uncle because uh, I used to visit Utadom Kurupogela, Notadumbao, almost on a daily basis. Um, they did not have children, so pox, no, no, And um, they then approached my parents and inquired about the possibility of them adopting me. Utaraga um, said, no, this is umdana traditionally go ako, you know, but what we cannot do, ukchincha, ifaniake, you know. Um, in an African sense, he still remains your son. So I had that uh, relationship with the, the Bukelas and by extension with the Sobukwes. Um, and I want to make it loud and clear because in case Abandu would uh, associate my relationship with them as a political relationship, it is not a political relationship, but at the same time, we can't uh, run away from the politics which shape the, the life um, of an African person. Um, and it, it so happened that in 1976, we had a strike at Forte, um, which it was as a follow-up with Soweto um, uprisings. And um, so that equally affected us at uh, Ote University, University Geyavalwa, you know, and uh, some of us who were members of SASO, uh, South African Students uh, Organization, um, had to be the guests of the state in the various prisons, the, 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 the Eastern Cape province. And, uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, I was amongst those who were uh, incarcerated uh, at Fort Morgan, you know, um, in East London, at Buffalo City. Um, and when I was released from prison, I was very, very angry, very angry. I mean, I, I wanted to grab an AK-47 and, and, and shoot at the first uh, white person that I come across with. Um, but of course, that, 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 that anger mellowed with time. And I remember um, going to town in Stakesbridge. There was Utadulu in Chizan, Ubudlu in Ungundrov, 
you know, was a guy. And, I, and uh, I went to him and I requested him to make arrangements for me to skip the country because I was extremely angry. But then him being of the same clan name, uh, he said to me, look, not all of us have to skip the country in order to fight uh, the apartheid system. There are those of us who really need to operate from within the country uh, to skip. Then I said, well, I am ready. He said, are you sure? He said, yes, I am. Um, he said, okay, I will organize. He organized for me to skip the country. But um, when I was all on my own, after he had done everything that he, he was instructed to do by the uh, leadership of the African National Congress, uh, that's when census came back to me. And the in the end of you know, uh, looking at the Taylor Bridge um, where I was supposed to cross. It dawned on me that I, was, I wasn't really ready, you know. Um, the flashes of my mother's funeral uh, just came to haunt me because I said, uh, how could my mother um, be buried as a pauper when I'm still alive? So, and I went back to Budlui, I said to him, ah, I'm not ready. And he said to me, well, um, I told you that uh, not all of us have got to leave uh, the country in order to fight uh, the struggle. But of course, that uh, to me was the beginning of a long road of being committed um, in the struggle. And when I came back, there was um, the late Butsel Bingendane. Butsel Bingendane was one of the PAC stalwarts. Um, you know, he was um, uh, together, no, you know, these were the, the, the PAC fellows um, who literally took us under their armpit um, with a very close friend of mine who's excess Koduka, who is an end. Um, so Obu Selby arranged for a meeting that Masim Kape, you know, we went to um, we went to Kimberley. Apo Uta Dusobukwe was It was at a time when he was uh, not allowed to see more than one person at a time. So we got there. Um, Ubutsel be uh, as the leader of the PAC in Eshel was the first to go in. You know, and after some time, Wapuma, Wangenu's excess, and I was the last to go talk to him. What struck me the most about Utabusobukwem was um, his memory. Um, notwithstanding all the nine years he spent on Robben Island, but his memory was very sharp. Um, and he said to me, wow, Lord, you are such a grown man now. And I said, well, we started chatting about this, that, 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 and the other. Um, but he asked me a very probing question. And the question was, Nina, youth of today, you take religion for granted. Um, how deep are you? In your religion. And then I said to him, what, what religion? And he said, you know that I'm a Methodist? And I said, yes, I do. And I said, well, I'm also a, a Methodist. And we started chatting because we had to be very careful about what we were chatting about, um, given the fact that he was a restricted man. Uh, he was not allowed to see more than one person at a time. And so we had to speak in codes, you know, but um, the, 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 that suffices. But what, what I'm trying to lead to is the astounding and amazing memory which he had, um, but also very much informed about what's happening you know, uh, in the country. So we drove back and uh, 
in our car driving back, very ironic, um, none of the three of us uh, said anything about the conversation which we had. Mr. Kona, Kona, Prof. Sikon. Sikon, Prof. I'm oh, here. Okay. Yes, okay. you can continue. Okay. Yes, thank you. Okay. None of us actually repeated um, the discussion which we had with him. And I, I guess it was um, a part of the confidentiality clause which we signed in inverted commas. Um, but but Mandi, Mandi, Kaze, when I'm putting this he's one of the most outstanding leaders of our country. Now, if you go to Robben Island, um, he spent three years with the other prisoners, but six years in solitary confinement. Uh, now it is it is it is it is very common for people to go to Robben Island. Um, but I have since 1976, I haven't been to Robben Island. Um, and I have been to Robben Island. Um, and I have been to Robben Island. Um, and I have been to Robben Island. Um, and I as students, as a forte, that we would never go back to university and uh, for as long as there is Bandu education. So we, we had that commitment. And over looks as I value university, we're not going to go back to university until Bandu education has been abolished. Now, fast forward, um, when I go to the island as a visitor, Nditi hai na mdani kile skuti ni no mdani kabuta duba uso wana tatu mkulu niati. I was surprised. Inje la leba be informed ngayo about, but he 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 said something very poignant to me. Oda dumkulu pogela wati look he and I get used to call me mfo. And he says, Mpo, in the absence of a better system of education, grab that education and you say to yourself and to the world, Bantu education has failed in me because you are not a product of Bantu education. If you regard yourself as a product of Bantu education, you are giving Bantu education a status it does not deserve because it has not made you who you are and what you are. And indeed, I mean, when we were going back to the mainland from the island, I said to Dadobao, Dadobao, I've decided now, um, I'm going back to the university. Um, and she says to me, Ndofu, what has happened? I said, look, Ndimamele Amazwi Karadomkulu very well, that I will go back, grab that education, but I am not going to regard myself and paint myself as a product of value education. I will never be. And proof of that has always been whenever um, you go abroad and uh, you have an opportunity to sit in a class with people who are never exposed to value education, but you come out tops. Um, that's how I say value education failed me. Now let's come back to Uta Dusobuko. You know, he was such a charismatic fellow um, to the extent that even the apartheid regime came to recognize his leadership qualities. Um, oh, I think it was Foster who said that uh, Usobu was a political heavyweight. Uh, all the others were, were, were lightweight um, because he had that charisma and um, that political magnetism. And um, what uh, evidently we like about him, he was a leader who led from the front. He, he never led from the back. Zikona ke inko keli, eziko kela zi pae mpangonga atumtu ukubi nko omo ezi ya ATP. Wamba pa gemba ena. 
Amane is man angapa, posama kato angapa angapa. He was not like that. Um, he would lead from the front. That is why, in 1960, he was a he was leading the the PAC activists. Bayos Nikela, you know, Emma Polisini, Utige Uferbut Yena. There were many political prisoners in South Africa, but the only political prisoner that I kept in solid cause of his charisma. That in itself is an indication of how much the apartheid regime recognized him and how much it feared him as a person. So that, that is Robert Sobuko. But where it is painful is that currently the present day political dispensation equally um, is afraid, I will, I will, I will say, uh, for reasons better known, uh, I don't know, uh, to release even the video clips and the voices um, of Sobukwe. Sobukwe remains incarcerated in his own death because one, Asiva Ilis Lake, meanwhile, all other political prisoners, um, Amazu Abo were recorded and um, their voices were released, but not Sobukwe. Uh, except for Prof, are you still there? Hey, I think we we've lost to Professor Zide. Um, Lilika, you can hear me. Please unmute yourself. Can you hear me? Just unmute yourself, please. Yes, I can hear you from this. Yes. Okay, fine. Um, maybe you can chip in while Prof. Prof. Uh, I think he, he mentioned the charger issues. I think he, he lost his battery. The Zoom does okay. have a bit. We want to apologize to our viewers on Wesley Guild SA. We will get Professor Zeta back on online. Do uh, you want to say something in the meantime while we're waiting for <laughs> Professor Zede? I can see Sister Telela is also here. But while, while maybe you're still trying to think what you're going to say as we engage, it is very interesting on, on, on the note that we left the Professor Zede on to, to really uh, say we're struggling to get um, anything recorded on, on, on Sobukwe. And when Prof comes mm -hmm. back, I would like to, to engage him further on that to say why was the South African apartheid regime so scared of him to into that extent that there's nothing um, on his voice, recorded speeches and all the stuff. Uh, we will try and get to Professor Zeta back online, Sekul uh, Sakakulu, for that cut in transmission. Uh, we should, not, we should, not, we should not die. I, no, yeah, who okay. Are you back, Prof? Yes, he's here. Okay, okay. You can continue, Professor Zeta. Sir, we, we, we got cut there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bo Zide. Okay. Yes, we can we continue. Back now? Yes, we're back online, yes. Yes. Just adjust your camera, please, so that we can yeah. see you better. Prof? Yes, can you see me? That's much better. Yes, I can. we can see you okay. better now. Please continue. Sorry about okay. that. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know about social media because I kept on talking. I think so. So, when you learn the Abu Tetanga, you there were no speeches uh, that were recorded about okay. Um, it, so yes, I think yes, that's very yes, critical. Yes. yes, just move from there. Thank you. Yeah, you, you see, it is it is very painful that um, Usobukwe remains incarcerated even in his death. 
um, because right now all other political prisoners um, do have video clips and their own voices. This is Mamelayo, but without um, Sobukwe Agabiu, other than written speeches, you know. Um, so that is really painful because we strongly believe that as and when his voice could be um, accessed by the present day generation and even by government, Ubanga uh, Bamchaumi, Uziko on Samuekwe archives, I don't know. But um, it is very, very sad. You know, it is very sad that uh, this uh, Methodist preacher, this stalwart of the liberation struggle, um, remains uh, silenced even in his death. Um, it, it's, it's very unfortunate. But, but let me also conclude by saying that um, one of the things that uh, Dr. Dondolo, who is the chairperson of the uh, Robert Mangalese Sobuke Trust, is working hard on is to try and get uh, a video clips from um, either the UK, because remember, Galogu incarceration yake was, though it was apartheid, which took over in 1948, but uh, by and large, the colonial uh, government, which was uh, uh, Britain, you know, they may have we archives this Zabo. This so U Dr. Jondolo is working hard um, to try and get those. And I hope that once that is achieved, at least it will be something of great importance to the history of Methodism and as well as the history of the uh, political landscape of South Africa. Um Mandipeze Gengeliti Paya SF Mukitimi Methodist Seminary. We do have a library, which is named after um, Sobukwe and Mandela. And, and I remember when I was still chairperson of the um, Seth Mukitimi Methodist Governing Council, when the, the, the idea of naming the library was mooted, um, there were people who said, we must name it um, Mandela Sobukwe Library. And then I, I said, no, 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 no. We will be missing the point because remember, we are not doing this for the present generation, um, but for generations to come. Because if you say it's Mandela Sobukwe, further down the line, people will say, oh, Mandela's surname was Sobukwe and Sobukwe's first name was Mandela. So let us just be specific and say it's a Nelson Mandela and Robert Sobukwe library. And that was a great. Um, so I'm happy to share, you know, the little knowledge that I have about Dr. Sobukwe. He's really a great man. Um, he's a preacher, um, but of course, Buko some prophets of doom. Um, his his grave was uh, uh, desecrated in the, in Harafrenet, but subsequently Yalungi Swake. You know, we have a uh, a museum and a learning center in Hrafrenet uh, in honor of Buddha Dusobukwe. And um, so I, I think these are some of the things which uh, we really as Methodists um, to be very proud of. Um, yeah, Mbulani not I mean, I think Mandi, let me pause there and uh, entertain some questions. Thank you very much, Bounjo, uh, for, for that uh, input. Um, there is some engagement. We want to welcome also on our Zoom platform here the former president of SMMS, uh, Professor uh, Reverend uh, Kumalo, who wrote yes. about Utatu uh, Sobukwe uh, on his African okay. Methodism book. Welcome, Prof. We'll give you an opportunity later in the session to just have one or two inputs on that. Uh, Professor Sita, there is a question from Umanta uh, from our Facebook um, viewers who asked a question, what is it that needs to be done to fully preserve the legacy of or Robert Sobukwe and deal with the distortion of history about his political role? That's a question from U Umanza. I'm going to give two questions, then you can have a bite on them. And then the next question from Utrasi Bekachai Kai says, we understand that Prof U U was a preacher, that he refers to Sobukwe as Prof, was a preacher, as you mentioned, but there was a time in his life where he had issues with Christianity. 
Can you elaborate on that? Those two questions, maybe if we can just have a bite on them and then we'll come back to the others. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, first and foremost, I think as far as um, preserving and reserving the knowledge and the values of Sobuko, um, remember as Methodists, we can say, look, when John Wesley um, was was going to the States in um, Anawaya and that is Auziga. And um, there was Imorivians uh, in that boat. Uh, Moravians were led by Peter Bola. And there was a storm. And as soon as the storm hit the boat, um, the boat almost capsized. But the Moravians were sitting right at the corner, at the corner singing and praising. And when the storm was come, John Wesley went to Peter Bola and said to him, Peter Bola, were you not afraid when the storms were hitting the boat? Oh, you know, I wasn't afraid because I have faith. I have faith in the Lord. And uh, then John Wesley said, but how do I practice faith. And he said, you must preach faith until you have it. So th 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 that's my preface. Coming back then, I, I, I think for as long as we public intellectuals fail to recognize, to speak out loudly, one about Pan-Africanism, two about Africanism, we will be doing a great injustice to Robert Sobukwe and his principles. Because remember, even former president Mbeki, you know, in his famous speech, I'm an African. He had borrowed from Pan-Africanism, he had borrowed from black consciousness, and he equally borrowed from evidently from the African National Congress values. So my, my response to Manda's question is that we can only do justice if we stand up those of us who are knowledgeable, like uh, Umtungwa, he will be giving an input, who are knowledgeable about the role played by Uta Dusobukwe, we have to unashamedly speak and continue plowing his principles and values. That, that, that's my response. About Christianity, yes. There was a time when uh, he questions Christianity, but he did not question Christianity to the extent of saying, I don't believe. He was more concerned about the manner in which Christianity was presented to us as Africans, where our African values were painted as barbaric, as uh, a heathen and as backward. So that was his principle. To the extent that even though he questioned um, Christianity at the time, but remember he died in Robin Island. He continued to preach the gospel, um, even though the apartheid government at some time, at some point, did not want him to mix with people, but they did grant him permission to preach. So that is how he embraced Christianity and how he embraced Methodism. Okay, Prof. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much for, 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 for those uh, inputs. Ukwame uh, Ndebele says that uh, they are they are amongst those who are in campaign to get Forte University changed to uh, Robert Mangalto Soboko University. What's your take in that regard? That's a question from Ukwame Ndebele. But before maybe you respond to that, I just wanted to engage you further. I mean, you, you, you mentioned that uh, so Sobuko was mostly feared by the apartheid regime in, in, in to the extent as you have mentioned that he, when you visited him at some point you had to go and see him one by one and all the time you were monitored you had to speak in codes that kind of leadership and that kind of 
of, of fear that the apartheid regime had against us. But what do you think in your engagement, maybe that might have him, and also in the literature that you might have come across with, has made such a fear for one particular politician during the time of apartheid? Maybe you can engage us further on that, Prof, as you respond to the other questions. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too clear about the last question, the engagement in quotes. What about it? I'm, I'm asking whether, what do you think was the reason why the apartheid regime feared Robert Sobuka so much that they did not okay. want him uh, to be recorded on speeches. Okay. They did not want him to see many crowds. They, don't, they had to see people one okay. by one, as you mentioned earlier. Okay. Yes, bro. Okay. All right, okay. No, that's fine. Um, let's start with the first question. Um, Forte being renamed Robert Sobukwe University. It's, uh, it's, it's a very interesting uh, question because I'm, I'm an alumnus of Forte. Uh, I, I studied at Forte all my junior degrees up to masters. And so I am very passionate about that university. Um, to the extent that I think there was a time when um, universities' names were changed um, during the merger process. That was 2002. Um, so the idea of Forte changing its name from Forte to Robert Sobuke came up. Um, and, and some of us were, were part of the, the group which said, if we have to recognize the role played by Usobukwe in the politics of Azania, um, it should be changed. But of course, there was a group which felt um, very strongly that Iforte is on Oxford of Africa. Um, it's got its own uh, profile, it's got its own name and whatever. Um, so I, I, for one, I, I would entertain you know, the name change. Because one, we have former University of uh, Port Elizabeth, which has now been named as the Nelson Mandela University. Um, one, I was an executive advisor to the vice chancellor there some couple of years ago. It was named Nelson Mandela Metropolitan University because um, the family felt that, look, uh, there are so many uh, things and buildings and streets which have been named after Utad Mandela. And so it's going to be quite tautological for a university to be named after him. But when the metro uh, fell away to be now a, um, th this big metro, um, what do they call it now? But the Nelson Mandela dispatch and craft in it, no, not craft in it, mutiny coming together. Um, yeah. Then they said, well, it's now Nelson Mandela Bay. That's right. Let's call it Nelson Mandela University. So to, the long, the short of it, I think it would really be an honor for Forte to be named Robert Sobuka University, RSU. Um, because remember in 1949, Robert Sobukwe was the president of the SRC at, at Forte. And that's the, the period at which he showed leadership. When across the river Chumi, the nurses there were also on strike. And for the first time in the history of Forte, the nurses did not attend the um, completers ball. At Forte, we used to have Computers ball, freshers ball, graduation ball, this and that and that. Uh, then that's when he said, sit here whilst our nurses across the river Chuni are on strike. Then they, they joined hands uh, to give recognition to that strike. So I, I think it would really be an honor for Forte to be renamed Robert. So if we have to sign a petition or of whatever kind. I think I will be amongst those who will say, let Forte be renamed. That, that, that's my own view. There could be other Forterians who may have a totally different view. That's fine. Um, but, you know, that's my view. But coming back to the codes, 
um, why the apartheid regime was afraid of Sobukwe. I think I did indicate earlier that um, he was a very charismatic fellow, very charismatic. Uh, when you engage uh, the prof, you would get a sense that you're talking to somebody from another planet, you know? And, uh, and remember, he was very good in languages. He spoke Africans very well. He spoke English very well. He actually got a distinction in English in metric. He spoke Kosa, Zulu, Tswana very, very well. Now, the apartheid regime could not put him in a corner in any way because of his charisma and because of his intelligence. When he was a student at Hilltown, uh, there was a, 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 a competition for um, writing an essay. When the teacher there who was teaching them English got to know that Robert Sobukwe had entered that competition, she decided to withdraw. She said, no, I can't compete with Robert Sobukwe. And, but there was one who said, no, I'm going to compete. And Sobukwe was recognized. He got the prize for that competition. And, 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 and so that's why I said earlier, he was leading from the front all the time. Uh, others were leading from the back and I'm not going to mention who those are, but that is why the apartheid regime was so much afraid of Robert Sobukwe. Even today, his voice is not heard. There are no video clips except the pictures and the written uh, speeches. So th th that is why he was such above the others. So that is why they said he's a political heavyweight and, uh, and Fairwood also confessed that there were other uh, political prisoners, but Sobukwe was one and the only political prisoner whom he decided to keep away from the others. Thank you, thank you very much, Prof. Utamara Mamte Nakamoti says that uh, I'm tempted to say that Sobuke was not just being feared, he was also being deleted and denied his existence and his political contributions to remain as non-existence, hence you can't find any voice recordings of him. So we may believe in only the existence of Mandela. That's her take, that's what Tamara is saying. We'll just engage U, U Professor Kumalo Mtungwa, are you there? Yes, but I'm, I'm here. I'm here. Yes, can, can, can you just please adjust your camera a bit so that yes, okay, you can hear thank you. That, that's okay. much better. Can you just thank give you us so a, a, a five minutes input on? I know you've written about this legend in your book, African Legends of Methodism Life Stories of Some Leaders Formed by the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. And Robert Mangalis Sobukwe is one of those legends. Maybe as you speak this evening about his life, we give an opportunity to engage the Wesley Guild essay again. Over to you, sir. Thank you so much, Mbulisi, and thank you to Uprof, um, and thank you to all of you for affording me just an opportunity uh, to say something about this legend. Yes, Baba. Uh, Mbulisi, it is, a, it is a, one of those um, um, amazing opportunities to celebrate a great leader uh, like Ubaba Usobu. And in fact, Abanta Bafana and Ubabu Zide are really privileged to have met this great leader of our people. He was unique in many ways. Just to share with people that there are three books over and above the old book that we know, uh, How Can a Man Die Better? That was written by Pogrund on, 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 on Sobuwe. Three books have come out in recent years, in the past two years or so. The first one is Lie on Your Wounds, uh, which are the letters uh, of Sobuwe whilst he was in prison and all his writings um, written, it's edited by Derek Hook. And then there is one uh, by, uh, by Benjamin Pokrund again, which is Robert Mangaliso Sobuwe, New Reflections. And then there is the last one that has been done by Utamiga Plachi, uh, which is Sobuwe, the making of a pan-Africanist. And I think when one goes through that, uh, he understands quite well that Sobuwe, um, his greatest gift to, to the people of South Africa and the struggle in South Africa was the emphasis on Pan-Africanism. 
they, there is hardly anybody um, uh, be, before him other than Upixliga uh, Isagaseme, who can be said was a Pan Africanist uh, par excellence. Usobuwe um, um, took this uh, legacy of Pan Africanism to another level, but taking it from people like Upixliga Isagaseme, who had taken it from people like Marcus Garvey, that great um, uh, leader. Uh, from Jamaica and people like uh, W. E. Du Bois, who came from uh, the U.S., were the proponents of Afri of Pan Africanism, and then uh, Seme takes it over and pushes it when he writes that great speech, "The Regeneration of Africa," um, uh, which can be understood much better when one reads Mbegi's uh, speech, "I am an African." It echoes the same sentiments. Um, and now Sobuwe began to give us a picture of what it means to be pro-African at its best, um, and, and not just to neutralize Africanism and as, as just part of the human community, but looking at the uniqueness of what it means to be an African. Be a person who, is, who has got potential, amazing potential and right to freedoms in spite of being oppressed and limited. Now, with the two minutes left, let me just say that in terms of methodism, it is always uh, important for us not to be shy to say some of these leaders, um, Methodism does not just claim them. Uh, they, 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 they did not just do Methodism a favor by joining it, but Methodism produced them. Sobuwe himself got the education that he got through Methodism. Without Methodism, there is no evidence whatsoever that Robert Mangaliso Sobuwe would have been educated uh, because the, the access to superior education in Methodist institutions, including Hilltown, where he was supported by Methodists of goodwill who paid hard cash for him to be in that school and for him to move to Fort Hare, where some Methodist beneficiaries, benefactors, paid for him for that education. And so Methodism, it can be said that it produced uh, Robert Sobowe, but being an African himself, he was not just an underdog of, of what was being taught to him. He was so intelligent that the kind of education that he, he, he received, he took it to another level. It made him to be not just a certificate person, but rather an educated person who used the education to understand his world and, his, and, 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 and the freedom that he needed. So that is very, very important to remember uh, as a contribution. So Google was indeed, a, the, the, the system feared him. Uh, I think he's the only uh, person whom this, the apartheid government went to an extent of meeting and deciding on a policy which they promulgated, which they called the Sobuwe Clause. Nobody else has got that even amongst all those who struggled. And it was, the parliament was called specifically so that they could extend and justify imprisoning him uh, the way they did. They, he was intelligent, yes. That's why they were they afraid of him. He was intelligent. He was a charismatic leader, but also it was sound what he was saying. His struggle was real and, was, and he was brave. Because as he led the march, literally, as Baba was saying, leading from the front to go and ban passes. So he was a danger to, to, to society in, in terms of the apartheid government. And so Kaika is right in the question that he's raising. The fact that Sobuwe struggled with the church was that the church is always a mixed bag. You know, on one instance, 
it is liberative. But on the other hand, the church at the same time become an oppressive mechanism or institution that entrenches the oppression of, of people. And that has been like that for time immemorial. The church is never a perfect institution. It's always a, 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 an ongoing um, work uh, to transformation even for itself. And so who has an intelligent person picked that up early that we are dealing with a mixed bag here. He, he celebrated it when the church was getting it right and he was prepared to challenge and to a point of almost denouncing it when the church was exposing its, uh, its, its racism which was also happening at the church in the same time. There are instances that are given here that shows, in fact, that instance when he said, I'm no longer a Christian, I denounce being a Christian, and that will surprise people, was simply because a Methodist chaplain who was progressive, who was visiting at Rock Island, was very helpful to understand him. But later when that one left, another Methodist chaplain was conservative, was a racist, did not clash with him. And after that, he said, I denounce my faith. But of course, later, he came back and continued with his faith. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank, thank you very much, Prof, for, 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 that, for that input. Um, you, you spoke about the idea of, of Pan-Africanism and the dream that Sobuko had about Pan-Africanism. The question is, is that an elusive idea? that refused to die, can you still realize that? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 in full we've got no option. Um, Africans need to realize there will never be anything else in this world other than being Africans. And so they will always need to assert themselves and build the, on the ideas of Sobu, where, of Pixley Semen and others, and say, at best, this is who we are as Africans. We can make a contribution to the global community. The global community is not complete without the contribution of the African people. So it's not an idea that has to be left behind. That's a mistake to think. It will never be outdated. As long as Africans are alive, they will always be needing to come to the table to make their own contribution to and, and assert themselves and say, we are Africans and here's our contribution politically, economically, religiously, culturally, and otherwise in order to complete the project of making this world a more humane place. Thank you very much, Prof. Back to you, Professor Zite. There is a question uh, from Umandla who says, what is your take about Shabville Massacre being renamed the Human Rights Day? Is it another way to distort history and obliterate his legacy, that is Soboko's legacy, given that he led the march to the police station? And then Kauke Lukeji says, um, please expand the MCC vision of a christ sealed Africa, inspired by Soboko quotes, where he quotes that we must therefore appreciate our role, we must appreciate our responsibility, the African people have entrusted their whole future to us, and we have shown that we are leading them not to death, but to life abundantly. Can you just comment on that, Prof. Thank you. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, number one, about uh, the Sharpville, I'm actually very angry that uh, we seem to erase Sobukwe's vision and Sobukwe's uh, ideals. Uh, and that is largely the, the distortion of history we're talking about. There is just no way in which even the present day government um, can keep on softening the approach and uh, we'll call it the shovel a day, whatever they call it. It cannot be because it is a systematic and a systemic um, attempt of eviscerating the name Robert Sobukwe. Um, I, I'm, I'm, you know, we really need to say Shabville 21 should really be called Sobukwe Day. I, I mean, there are so many days now called about this, that, 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 but why not Sobukwe? Like for instance, when we're talking about December 16th, it used to be called Tingan's Day. Now it was uh, changed to uh, covenant day, and I don't even know what it is now called. 
but the reconciliation the day is prof. The, what are we reconciling it's called reconciliation day what are we reconciling it should really be called dingan's day because that's the day on which dingan fought the white settlers and so is shabir you know it, it, there is just no way we are consistently feeding the present day generation poison when we don't recognize this now when we come back to um, what was the second question christianity uh, the, the, oh, the second question uh, was on the christ healed africa the, the vision yes yeah christ healed africa you know you know you know um, we must remember one thing that uh, christ jesus christ was a jew but as he was a jew there was a time when his parents had to flee and sought refuge in egypt egypt as we all know is in africa um, so when we talk about christ healed africa at the same time we should remember to honor our africanness and our the, the, the APSA Bank now has got this uh, Africanicity, what do they call it? Africanacity, yeah, that's what they say. So Christ healed Africa, but to what extent, and, and, and this is a Methodist preacher talking now, to what extent have we embraced Christ healed Africa? For as long as we don't accept our Africanness, as Africans, for as long as we don't, we fail to accept Africanism, we fail to accept Pan-Africanism within the context of Christ healed Africa, I think we're missing the point. But the issue that I believe conference should also discuss very deeply is when we talk about Christ healed Africa, to what extent have we, as Africans in the Methodist Church promoted the idea of Pan-Africanism in order to embrace the very uh, the concept of Christ in Africa. It starts with, with us, it starts from within. Then we can, we, we can take it as one of the four pillars of the Methodist Church. Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, Professor Kumalo, you, you made mention of the books that were that are written about Sobukwe Utando Lue Tudlanga says, Mtungwa, there are many other books that were penned about Sobukwe, that Radibe and Dade Peko cannot be overlooked when talking about Absolutely. texts written on yeah. Sobukwe. I think that's that's a very fair point that uh, Utando Lue Tudlanga is, is making there. And also, as we as as draw to, to close, uh, uh, Prof Zid and now Prof Kumalo, we cannot talk about Sobukwe and not talk uh, about land. <laughs> <laughs> I expect you cannot that. talk. I you cannot talk about. Question. You cannot talk about uh, <laughs> Robert Mangalisa Sobukwe and not talk about land. Uh, the the political legacy of Mangalisa Sobukwe is, will always be remembered uh, as 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 that of land is ours as African. And you you understand that our government has been in in a in a journey. I call it a journey because it has been taking uh, some time now about uh, expropriation without compensation and, and all the stuff. What do you think uh, Sobukwe's uh, leadership would, would help us in understanding the importance of land for African people? Mm. Uh, you want me to come in? Yes, Prof, you can come in. And then okay, Prof, thank you. Well, yeah, thank you. Let me start by saying, well, when I mentioned the books, in fact, I was just mentioning the most recent books, okay? I'm aware of the older ones um, and then appreciate them too. But it's exciting that we've got things, books that have come out in the last year or two. Now, in terms of the off land, um, and again, that's what, that's the other reason why the government was more afraid of Sobukwe than any other, because you can talk about the economy, that, that becomes a temporal debate um, that can be resolved if people want to. You can talk about political rights. People are easy to understand and respond to that. Land 
is at the heart of uh, people's humanity, belonging, identity, culture, and who they are. And what makes them to be more afraid of him than any other thing was because of his emphasis on land. That's why even today, if we are going to resolve the challenges that we are faced with, we will never do that if we don't resolve the issue of land. And in fact, even the church has to, un to understand that it, can, it needs to help um, in, in learning from Sobuwe's thinking and teaching the significance and importance of land. For us as a church, we need to do this from a theological perspective. How do we understand land and its significance as the church? Thank you. You can chip in, uh, Professor Zito, on that issue of land and... Yes, thank you very much. I think I fully agree with um, what you have said. Um, there can never be freedom without land. Um, one of the um, African singers, he says in one of his songs, these white settlers left Europe unchaste and came to Africa uninvited. And when they came here, now that's me talking, we all know 1652 Jan van Riebeek, they came in those three, um, uh, what do you call it, sheep, dromedaries, reicha, and hude wop, but they did not have any land. The land that they took they took the land from our ancestors. And there can never be any freedom until and unless the land which belongs to African people is given back to the African people, then we can talk. I think there was a, a huge mistake when there were discussions about Odessa, where the issue of the land was not thoroughly dealt with. And uh, I agree with Mdungwa. For as long as we don't put the land issue on the table for discussion and concluded once and for all, this country is never free. That is why, for instance, um, we still talk about South Africa. Why not talk about Azania? Azania, which is the original name of South Africa. South Africa is just a geographical piece of land situated at the southern part of Africa. Why not Azania? If we have to change everything else, we really need to change the name to Azania and we take the land, the land belongs to the people of South Africa and Africa, and that's it. That's my take, thank you very much. Okay, okay Prof, I think the, the last two questions that we're gonna engage is is coming from Usi Venazo who, who says and asks the question, is Sobuko Trust the only institution that has the responsibility to trace voice or video clips of Sobuko? If so, that does mean our democratic government is also playing part on destroying the legacy of Sobuko by not partaking in tracing the videos and clips of Sobuko. I think the question is clear, Prof, can you, can you can you just respond to that quickly before you go to the last question? Yeah, let, a bit longer. yeah let me respond quickly. The RMST is definitely not the only uh, uh, organization that is attempting to reclaim the video clips of Sobuko. If there are any, that would be most appreciated. I was simply trying to cite an example that given the fact that up until now, Sobukwe's voice remains silenced, but there are these attempts by the RS, RMST, you know, to um, go to the archives and get whatever assistance that we can get. If there are others, well and good. Okay, okay, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, the 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 next question is a longer comment, uh, which I think is just we'll take it as a comment. If you want to respond to that. You might just respond to mm -hmm. Tamara Mamkina Kamoti um, uh, writes in, in saying that um, 
there are books that are written by Soboko, which you have alluded to, and Professor Kumal as well, which have also, she says that Methodist, which has not done justice to this icon, uh, there cannot be two names of a place or a person, therefore, but injustice continues as the apartheid and the ruling government has done to Sobukwe not to be in existence education in our church. But Sobukwe is non existent, that's what she, she says. And he says, All that we're fed is Mandela, as it is believed that every member of our church is ANC. And this says this must change now because we they, they don't want to be fed in Troya, Freedom Chapter, Freedom Chapter charter in our lifetime. Uh, that, that's a comment from U, U Tamara Mamke Nagamoti. Yeah. Okay, T Tamara, I, I agree with you, you know, about uh, uh, Sobukwe not being given um, recognition. But let me start with the latter part of your statement, um, where we say every member of our church is considered to be ANC. Remember, a, a, a belief or a subscription to a particular political party is a, um, a responsibility of an individual. It's your own choice. So the Methodist Church cannot um, subscribe to a belief that so and so has got to be ANC or PAC. It's a it's, it, it's a choice made by an individual. If an individual wants to be ANC, so be it. If an individual wants to be EFF, so be it. If an individual wants to be PAC, so be it. So th th that's really an individual choice. But let's come back to your issue about the continued um, silencing of um, Sobukwe. Um, I, I am not in government. And, and so I'm a senior citizen of the country. Your concerns are my concerns. You know, I mean, I can say this even to President um, uh, Ramaphosa that um, everybody who has had an opportunity to meet with Sobukwe, to read about Sobukwe, uh, is, 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 is disturbed about what is happening in the country. That um, this stalwart of our liberation has not been given any due recognition except to say, maybe there are streets, I mean, in Cape Town, we've got Robert Sobukwe Avenue, this and that and that, but that is really not enough. I would go to my eternal sleep feeling extremely relieved and freed the day we have a Sobukwe day recognized by the present day government. I will sleep well the day we have a university named after Sobukwe. I will sleep well the day the corridors of Pretoria uh, offices of Cape Town are named after Sobukwe. And, uh, and, and, and finally, I, I think I will be at peace with myself the day Hrafrenet is probably called Robert Sobukwe Town. Then I believe that we shall have done justice to this great son of the soil. I pause. Thank, thank you very much, Bonjour. This is what happens when you've got two professors in the same platform, because now Professor Kumalo mm. has raised issues of pan-Africanism and Embo says, I'm promising you that we will come to this platform once again to talk about pan-Africanism because he feels that Professor Kumalo, I think, um, it, it was uh, necessary that uh, Professor Kumalo dealt with that because Uembo feels that uh, Uprof should put into perspective the role played by Uapim Da and Lembede, where the Roman Catholic in, in the development of Pan Africanism, and he feels that he jumped to Upixlikaseme and to Sobuko and omitting other facts. But it's a topic for another day. We promise that we will definitely uh, yeah. come back to deal with those issues. Any concluding remarks from your side, yeah. Prof, yeah. as we wrap up the session? I know the session is not going to be enough as you're talking about this great legend, Robert Mangaliso uh, Sobukwe yeah. and other Pan-Africanists who will be dealt yeah. with at the later stage. Concluding remarks, Prof. Concluding remarks, um, yes, indeed. Um, I am in the process of finishing a book about um, Veronica Zondeni Sobukwe. 
Um, because when you're talking about Robert Sobukwe, there is no way in which you can skip talking about Veronica Sobukwe. You know, Umamu Veronica is one of those stalwarts of the revolution that equally like uh, her husband has not been given due recognition. So let us hope that when we meet next, as I am finalizing the book, um, it will be available. Um, so that in itself is, in my view, a recognition of saying we have these two very important um, stalwarts of the liberation, these two important Methodists, Robert Sobukwe having been a preacher of the Methodist Church, Mam Sobukwe having been a member of the Women's Manyano. Uh, so that gives an opportunity for us as Methodists and uh, as Wesley Guild, by the way, um, to say we have a responsibility of taking our church from this level to the next level so that we can all embrace what it means to be an African and what it means to be a true African Methodist. Thank you. We well, thank you so much, Prof, for your, for your time and, and your input. Indeed, we are appreciative of the time that we've given the Wesley Guild essay. We'll continue to engage with you or even on other issues that you've raised uh, with us this evening. Usbulele Nasekaya for the time that they've given you Baubel Kunyanati this evening. Just some few notices before we ask oh, Professor Reverend Kumalo to close for us with a prayer, is that this week we are looking at biographies of, of some Methodist people that we have influenced our ministry and our mission as a church. Tomorrow we will be looking at the life of the Reverend Dr. Mvume Dandala, and later in the week, um, Dr. Gabriel Sidilwane, and that is uh, Stanley Mukhova. So please tune in six o'clock, same time, Wesley Gilde say, uh, keep safe, keep social distancing, sanitizing, and stay safe from the coronavirus. We pray for those who are struggling with the virus as it is, and we pray for those who are struggling with gender-based violence, and we hope that God will make a way. Mdunga um, Okay. Lapo? Yes. Please close okay. with a prayer for us. Thank you. Okay, let us pray. Oh Lord, we are forever grateful for moments like these ones where we come together to make and remake knowledge and meaning for us to be able to move forward. We thank you for, for, for Ubabu Zide who has helped us today to understand and celebrate Ubaba Usobuwe, Nomama Usobuwe. We thank you for this platform, for the young people of the Methodist Church uh, for the leadership that continues to steer this ship forward. May we continue to keep the stories and the lives of those who went before us uh, alive and continuing to inspire us. For we ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much and good evening. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.